go to the play action pass to the left with Jeff, uh, Justin Jefferson running a skinny post on the backside. This was something they created explosives with all year last year. Good call by Kevin O'Connell. Very nice throw, very nice catch. Right through the seam. Carlton Davis, this is a mat looks like a matchup zone coverage here. Carlton comes out on number one, or at least he thinks he's going to be number one instead. It's a quarters coverage, and you see Ryan Neal, number two, to us about K.J. Osborne the other day, and he said he's the best two he's ever been around, probably the best in the league. Another guy that can create explosives. You see them starting to get into that. On Alexander Madison, who is a strong runner, 215 pounds, ankle tackles aren't going to work. How about the balance? Yeah, the you know, balance. looked out of position twice and kept his balance to be able to get in there and score. And I got to tell you, it was just a little, it was so subtle what he did. Win against the safety. See, Evans has to play off. See, tight coverage on the receiver, Osborne. Because he's stacked behind Osborne, it gives him some room to be able to work and a good outside back to the inside move. And you can see Kirk Cousins with an entire offseason to work with Hawkinson in rhythm there with a nice throw on third down. Watch the defensive end, Derek Barnett. Watch the backers react just because you run a little bit. Just to, just as, as Kevin O'Connell says, just be efficient. And when you're efficient running the football, you get players out of position on first and ten. Philly attacking, anticipating run. Easy for him. And to Addison, and forget about this guy. Yeah, and, and Goodrich is in again for Maddox, and you're right. He gets caught up, concerned about that pass potentially to the inside. Rest of that Eagles defense is playing man. Osborne goes to the outside, and Cousins, a great read. As much as he wants to throw the ball to Jefferson, easy read. Wants to be able to throw, and then you get a one-on-one -on -one matchup here. But watch Kirk Cousins. Look at his eyes. He's looking here. And in fact, at the very last moment after he steps up, he moves his safety there, and then he sees the one-on-one -on -one matchup. Kevin O'Connell went out in this draft, and he said, we need to watch him on this crosser and watch the hesitation. Do I go with him? Do I stop? And that's why there's the bust. Remember, you're playing a lot of guys that haven't played a lot of football. Job in for Bradbury. Not quite sure on the call. Do I follow him across? Ends up freeing him. Out running. Just a technician. Watch Osborne. He's going to go up and give a little stair step versus man to man and leave Michael Davis in the dust over the ball. Watch. I'm going to pause it right here. Boom. He gives him just a quick stair step, and that's what gives him the separation, or else Michael Davis is going to undercut that route. These are the tiny, tiny details that make a huge difference. And what a play call by Kevin O'Connell. I mean, playing against one of your best friends in the league, both teams. Look at him, he doesn't even get a chance. He just hits that back foot, and that thing is coming out fast. What a play, look at him. Watch his feet. His back right foot's barely gonna tap the ground and balls out. That is so good. Right on that front number towards the sideline. Ooh, Justin Jefferson comes ripping across the field into Kirk Cousins' vision. Look at this, knows when to slow down. See him throttle a little bit in that zone before he got to that next defense. The Minnesota Vikings have come all the way back. Justin Jefferson's first touchdown catch of the... You know, it's hard to replace Adam Thielen and the productivity he brought the Minnesota Vikings. And obviously, they drafted Jordan Addison to try to maybe replace that void, but G. Hawkinson is the other piece that I think they've got to kind of look at both those two guys replacing the productivity they lost in Thielen from the year. When you bring in three tight ends and what you're trying to signal the defense is, hey, we want to run the football, but instead they expand the formation, they use those guys to clear out a deep dig route, in route to Justin Jefferson. Easy pitch and catch for Kirk Cousins. 22 yards and a first down for Minnesota. Frankie Louvu was right in the face of Cousins. He was able to get out around him, but you could see Sam Franklin Jr. initially on Jefferson. He thought he was passing him off. You know, Justin Jefferson and this dynamic duo. This player, you're like, don't touch him, but go ahead and watch this. The play action game right there, boom. That play action just opened this entire window right here. And I think Kevin O'Connell is doing a wow. Like crazy, but watch, you're gonna see him come all the way across the field, and that's speed. You gotta have a guy who has that type of a ju the juice to get all the way across the field. Once again, it starts with Minnesota, and they're getting back to it. And I think this is what creates issues, because their ability to run the ball last week, really turning it up, and gets people wide open. And With Justin Jefferson out of the lineup, and some of what he does, 
as the tight end. You'd think he works. And for the rookie touchdown number five. Well, this is just another good design. They run Jordan Addison on the deep crosser, but because the McCaffrey fumbled, converted a third down at 12 early. And get it into the we go back and take a look at that touchdown. You got Brandon Powell who's going to release up the field, and because of that, it holds Gibson, and then Jordan Addison's going to run the deep crosser. Great Greenlaw, number 57, he's the guy then who's got to try to get underneath that, and just a, a well-thrown ball. Within every zone coverage, there are holes within that, and it's a matter of whether or not you can exploit it. Run by this offensive line. They secure things over here, and you see the pocket then that Kirk Cousins has. He just lays it out there. You know, we've talked about Brock Purdy and what he does. Just continue to work the middle of the field, 87, T.J. Hawkinson, and I mentioned it earlier, but, you know, that's an option route for him. He has a chance to either us here tonight. Here's the press coverage that he has struggled with, and that route right there, there's the hole on Isaiah Oliver that drew the flag, but for him to be able to get off the line and, and get the defender moving the way that he did. And I don't know how Kirk Cousins got out of this. I mean, when I'm watching it, I thought he was down. And he's able to step up and still keep his eyes. Tell you what, Jordan Addison is giving Jair Alexander all he can handle right now. Jair Alexander, he's been in and out of the lineup. He's had back spasms or, or back contusions. He's in there right now going against their best wide receiver. And he is struggling. Part Dead of 23. Look at the protection Kirk Cousins has and the wide open TJ Hawkinson and the play is designed because of the bunch formation schematically. Kevin O'Connell does a great job of not allowing for TJ Hawkinson to get jammed. So because of that, now this is the third screen that the Vikings have run and it's finally executed well. And this is what happens when they can execute, get the linemen out there. Look at Garrett Bradbury out there blocking everyone is in sync for this gain of 18 yards. Hawkinson reading the defense beautifully, understanding where to sit down. That's what I talk about with the younger tight ends, not understanding where to sit. Once you see it zone, you know that after a 32-yard catch and run, and it's great to see that K.J. Osborne is back in the lineup, and then look how he gets right behind the linebacker, Quay Walker. As soon as he clears him, Kirk Cousins, with the time and the patient, puts it right on the money for the first down. Jordan Addison coming out of the backfield. We call this a wheel route. Sideline view, but from the field view, as the quarterback's throwing that ball, he zips it past the defender. So it's in lightning speed. The defender can't get his hands on it. So a nice spot pass by Justin Fields. Two catches over his first two years. That's just his fifth this year. And this is why you get excited about Justin Fields as a Bears fan. When you see those types of throws, and you'll see them sprinkled in during the course of the game, he just has this week. Holy cow, how about this? First two possessions to start, you're going down the field, and this is extremely well thrown. I thought he might have got it out beyond Darnell Mooney, but a great adjustment at the end to go get that again. These are some of the things that the Bears coaching staff have seen. Really nice pocket created here by the offensive line. You talked about kind of that speed rush. Just bring in three guys. You're going to try and force a flush to get him out. And watch Darnell Mooney, number 11. Here he comes right into that soft spot right there. Mooney had four catches over the first three games. That's his third one today. I don't know if he's going to be neat. Say you want to win late, you got to win early right here. Mooney in the slot wins right there off the release. And then the concentration to go up, hand fight a little bit with Sullivan. But look at the hand, look at the extension, the concentration, bring it back into the body. And look at that second hand. Just make sure it stays in there as you make contact with the ground. I mean, you want to talk about full extension, Adam. That is just one of the great catches. I mean, just a go and look at, look, go oh ahead, just goodness. stick your paw out there and bring it in. The ball 60% of the time. So on first and 10, that's the time to throw because you get one-on-one -on -one opportunities. Your best target, Mooney, on a comeback route against St. Juice, who's moving from slot to the outside last week and still getting comfortable out there. Uh, this one is really nice. Watch this. We're going to come down and come back in and out. Trayvon Diggs is going to get ready to run, and then whoop, there we go, going out the other way. Overplayed that one. 
and a great route call by Luke Getze. A move by Mooney for what ends up being the longest play of the game on either side. Backs and run. Watch him press through this, kind of get right up on top of Trayvon like he's going over the top, and then he snaps it out, and just a little bit late responding to that. So really nice at the top of the route by Darnell Mooney. You kind of have to take advantage of Diggs' aggressiveness, like out-leverage him a set. Justin Fields, the way he stands in the pocket, he's got pressure, he takes a hit as he's throwing, but watch the location of this ball. Perfect location, good adjustment by Mooney to turn his body, secure the football. But that ball is put in a location where Howard can't make a play on it. They throw to him the most of any Chicago wide receiver. His first touchdown reception of the season, and he does it against a three-time Pro Bowl cornerback. And the Bears, who have really been scoring the ball well, They've scored 62 points in their last two games. It was a catch. Every play reviewed, held on, cradled it in. Uh, watch how they challenge the release right here. You go up the field, now you break outside. That's outstanding. D. Alford cannot get back into that play. It is not OPI. There's nothing going on there. The way that offensive coordinators and play callers have created challenges. I love them throwing the ball on early downs. It's the most efficient opportunity. They just run a little corner out by Mooney out of the slot. I want to see them do that more with Justin Fields. Early downs, you don't have to protect a Big time drive. Watch Darnell Mooney here working in the slot. Just runs a little wheel route. Green Bay struggles to pass this route off. Mooney and Claypool just kind of running a switch little vertical and great throw by Justin Fields. Opportunity for a big play and you just wondered when he was going to emerge. Justin Fields drops that thing in there for him perfectly. Nice game. A week ago when they did a Hail Mary at the end of that game and they brought in Nathan Peterman. So the question was, oh, I get it. That means that Bajan doesn't have a very strong yes. arm. And as we talked to Matt Eberflus about it, he said, you'll find it. It looks like he's just going to go out of bounds. They go with the keeper, fake to the right, come back to the left, and slip Mooney from the backside. And right here, it looks like he's going out and then just stutters. And then comes back inside and catches everybody off guard and shows that speed uh, to get the big gain. A huge, explosive game for the Chicago Bears. Other blanket for Tyson Bajan. Here he's just running a simple shallow cross. Goes out and hands catch that one in front of him. Gets the first down. It's his fifth catch for 82 yards on the day. And a lot of times with those shallow crosses, usually you have somebody picking for you. I don't know how this ball got to Darnell Mooney. Yeah, let's talk about that. I mean, you've got to throw it to the outside, right? Keep it out there, but that thing is a rope to the outside. Perfectly placed ball. They always say there is no defense for the perfect football. Oh my gosh, almost through the hands of Hutchinson right there and then through the hands of Sutton and right into the hands of Mooney. A little late here in the... Yeah, just great little levels route. You've got something short, something deep, and then you've got from the opposite side of the field, Mooney coming in the middle there, intermediate throw, finding that hole and like they did in the first half, which is try and cross up. Debo Samuel is going to look like he's going to break back to the left. Instead, he crosses him up and goes to the right. That's when the 49ers were successful earlier, when they were used. Once again, the uncomfortable nature now of this Colts defense that loves to fly to the football. A little hesitant now, and those two plays. Huge running lane for Christian McCaffrey. You know, San Francisco lost its first game after they acquired McCaffrey last year against Kansas City and proceeded to win 12. Great job with the vision here by McCaffrey. This play starts to his right. You're going to get blocking all the way on the left side. Look at this push. Puts able to kind of just anticipate that backside cut. Feels it. Here's that vision and patience. And then, of course, he accelerates through the hole as, good, as well as any. Great effort by, you know, one thing about these receivers is they block as well as anybody. You can see the tight ends, receivers helping him out. I feel like the, the, the rhythm of this offense tonight is going to start with their running game. And again, a lot of it is depending upon how defenses are defending. They're trying to get him going again today. Nice shot by Colton McKibbitz here, helping out on the outside and then getting up to that second level. 
this is what this offense needs to have. This run game has to be that physical component that we saw in the first five weeks of the season. Defense on display. And everybody involved. Ayuk off the edge, getting down here, creating a, you know, a little bit of a interference, and then Warner. One thing I love about Kyle Shanahan and this running game is just the fact that they know just a hard inside. Watch all these guys come off the ball, but they understand the value of a two-yard run. Put your nose in there, bring your own blocker, get over the top, and Mitchell is just one of those guys that understands that value, understand. My goodness, great job of staying in their rush lanes. Hicks on hinges. They're trying to keep him corralled, but this is why he's so dangerous. Look how he stops here, sets his feet, boom! Puts a ball in a very catchable place for more. This is what Rondell Moore does. He's explosive. Rarely does a guy come into a franchise and turn everybody's heads right away. He doesn't fully know the offense yet. They're sprinkling him in with packages. And check this out. They're going to have these receivers block for him on the edge. Just an easy completion. Essentially, in this air raid system, those plays like that, those throws behind the line of scrimmage. Watch how he bought time. Doing what he does best, creating that extra second. Coverage. Can't leave Rondell Moore deep like that. Corner should be deep, and also this safety should be deep. I wish I had my pen and pad so I could draw and show you, but Patrick Peterson has to stay deep. He can't man turn to Hopkins. He has to guard his third of the field. He man turns, and he's at 14 yards with Hopkins. Rondell White is behind him. Big mistake for Patrick Peterson. Big play for Rondell Moore. Get this thing underneath. Rondell Moore with his athleticism. Throw short, run long. You get that little screen action underneath. Epps didn't take a good angle. Not want to give up the big play. They're playing soft on the back end of that defense, and that leaves some zones underneath. Oh, and we can hear Kyler Murray. You can just kind of sense the excitement that he had about Rondell Moore and his development. See, just that little short hitch right there same thing he was doing back for the you don't want to make a living having Nwosu covering up Rondale Moore you can see he just has his feet stuck in cement right there and Rondale Moore is so good with his excuse is this Thursday night football what are we I doing know what's here? happening here and, and Moore is a guy that I think college football fans are waiting to explode went to Purdue very elusive very powerful good job of keeping this play alive stays in sync with Moore well, they talked about it right here in the slot. They talked about how we want to get him involved. That's just a little stick route outside, right? Well, he's just going to come inside. You're going to run off and just come inside right here, sit down in that zone coverage soft, and then, you know, Kendrick, you got to, you, you're going for the ball right there. You're trying to create the, the fumble. You got to go make a tackle right here. Look at him punch at the ball, but he doesn't wrap up the player. Got to wrap up the player, then punch at the ball. Just out of sync right now. This is a great job by Tristan Colin on the block. He's the one that climbs to the second level and gets Marquise Bell. And there's a huge root, a huge void for Rondell Moore to run through. You, you've got to get that alert. Hey, it's not James Conner. It's not six. It's number four, and he's got breakaway speed in the backfield. What a nice change of pace that is from Conner, the big bruising back. You stick this jitterbug in there, and he you see a little double move here outside by Rondell Moore and Kyler Murray stands in the pocket and delivers a shot down the field when Kyler can ex extend plays Moore's gonna go like this and then leak out as soon as he sees his quarterback exit the pocket and he just finds a soft little zone beautifully thrown by Kyler Murray an eight yarder to McLeod his first as a 49er yeah, you're going to see McLeod. He starts here. They send McCaffrey off on the choice route to the left. He doesn't like it. Great protection, which allows Garoppolo time to come all the way back. I'm going to show you guys another look. Watch Ray Ray McLeod. He's really just got like a little pivot route. You see Jimmy G. He starts left with McCaffrey. Then it just goes scramble drill. Now he's just being friendly. He sees Jimmy G. Get out of there. The ad libs that work. Watch McLeod. He's just a flare control. He's just going to sit on the line of scrimmage out there. Then he looks back and Garoppolo's going crazy. So he says, okay, you know, I've got a linebacker on me. Let's go ahead and try and run by him. There goes Troy Reader, and he's gone. So Jimmy Garoppolo, a little Lamar Jackson style here, make a play. Good job by McCaffrey. Watch McCaffrey go out as he's the lead blocker on this. And then Ray Ray McLeod with his speed gets to the edge, and once nobody touches him, no one's going to catch him. 
the right. The inside slot screen off a quick ball fake. Got to navigate. Tillery, the defensive end, well done by Purdy. And you see that setting him up with an easy completion. His last two throws, the deep shots, under thrown. Get your quarterback back on track. Get him back in rhythm. And they established that on first down. And Brock Purdy has the top quarterback rating because he has a great coach and he has great players and all that. And that's true. That, all that's true. But he's also making these throws. A and the QBRs that we're talking about, it's not close. He's way ahead of the field. I'm talking about to come downhill. Right across that middle. And for him to put that ball on him and then McLeod to come downhill. Remember they talked about him not having a big arm? 